So are you one of those people who does a generational update? Every time a new version of your favorite phone comes out, you rush to the store and buy it? Well, I used to be like that and I stopped quite a while ago. Recently, I was kind of forced into upgrading my iPhone 14 Pro into the 15 Pro. Absolutely terrible mistake. My name is UK, let me tell you about it. Hello everyone and welcome. So I was originally a heavy Android user. I had used the original Google Pixel all the way through Google Pixel 6 Pro. Um, absolutely loved the Google Pixel line, loved Android, loved everything about it. A friend offered me a hand-me-down iPhone 12 Pro, which I gladly took just to kind of test and see what it was like. And you know what? I loved it. I loved it because I was able to get a Pro phone that wasn't massive. All of the Google Pixel Pro phones got bigger and bigger and bigger over time. And the form factor for me just wasn't good. It would feel bulky. It wouldn't fit in my pockets. It wouldn't go in my special pockets and my backpacks. It was a nightmare. So I wanted all of the features of a pro phone, but I didn't want a massive phone. Well, when I got the iPhone 12 Pro just to play around with, I fell in love with the form factor and slowly learned to love iOS. So I made the plunge, I switched from Android over to Apple and I got the iPhone 14 Pro. Now I had a full year with the iPhone 14 Pro and that was hands down the best phone I've ever used in my life. I thought, here's a phone, I'm gonna use this thing for three years at least. I love everything about it. My kid got that hand-me-down iPhone 12 Pro and like most kids, he broke it. And he's been doing so well at school. He's been, you know, working really hard on chores. He's been just a fantastic kid. And I wanted to really treat him and kind of upgrade that phone for him. And I was trying to find an economical way of doing it. I ended up just going and upgrading financing the uh, 15 Pro so I could give him my basically mint 14 Pro. It had 100% battery health. Everything about it was perfect. It was flawless. Huge mistake. So going from the iPhone 14 Pro to the iPhone 15 Pro for me personally has been nothing but a nightmare. And I think I'm still within the window where I can actually send this back and just buy another iPhone 14 Pro. Let me tell you why. So one of the main things I really loved about the iPhone when I first got my iPhone 12 Pro was the silent switch. It was visceral. It was, I click a switch, I put my phone down, I am now in work mode or I am now doing something. There was something about that physical switch that every time I switched it, I felt like I was about to do something. And I can't explain that feeling, but I absolutely loved that physical switch. I also loved the fact that at a glance, I could look at my phone and see if my phone was on silent. So the removal of the physical silence switch to me was actually a downgrade, not even a side grade. The action button, Android phones have been doing customizable buttons forever. And you know, while some people love them, some people think the action button is the best thing since sliced bread. To me, the standout feature of iPhones was that physical switch. I absolutely loved it. I understand where they're going with wanting to give people more customizability with being able to change what certain things do. They're getting a little bit more open with layouts and wallpapers and widgets and they're, they're following in Android's footsteps with customizability of your phone. But I think removing that feature for me was one of the biggest mistakes they've ever done. Right out of the gate, I really missed that little visceral feeling of clicking that switch and then getting my head down and getting stuck into whatever it was I was about to do. Something else that quite frankly pissed me off about the iPhone, I'm gonna be honest now, they marketed the new camera as a 120 millimeter optical zoom. I think it's 5X, I'm not sure. So going from the 14 Pro, which had the 77 millimeter optical zoom to the supposedly 120 millimeter optical zoom on the iPhone 15 Pro is actually a massive downgrade. And I'm not sure how they messed it up so bad. So I'm not super technical. I don't know exactly what these sensors are doing between these individual cameras. But what I do know is there are so many focal lengths between 3X and 5X or 50 millimeters up to 120 millimeters where this phone does digital cropping horrendously bad absolutely shockingly bad. So bad, I opened my photos and spat. It was disgusting. This is a $1,000 flagship phone with a 
terribly marketed camera system. The 120 millimeters or 5X optical zoom on this is essentially one of the worst crops I've ever seen from a cell phone. Every single picture I've taken using that optical zoom lens has just been a horrifically bad crop. So the main cameras on these iPhone Pro models are where the magic happens, right? I can fire up my camera app, point and shoot, and get an absolutely incredible image. The second I touch the zoom on this phone, I get really random crops at every focal length that are clearly not 24 megapixels. Now, I'm not gonna get too into the weeds with the actual what happens with the sensor when you go through those those zoom ranges. I'm gonna leave a link down to Tony and Chelsea Northrup's channel who explain this problem perfectly. See, I drank the Apple Kool-Aid. I looked at their marketing. They have basically the equivalent of seven different lenses across all different ranges. Essentially, it's just a bunch of different crops and a worse optical zoom than the iPhone 14 Pro had. The 77 millimeter on the iPhone 14 Pro was way better a max zoom than this ever will be. Like I don't understand how they fumbled the bag so hard on these crops and these cameras and the way they they crop, they change the megapixels, they change the pixel density, whatever it is, is terrible. You're paying a thousand dollars for a flagship pro level phone and this is a downgrade in every sense of the word when it comes to the cameras on the iphone 15 pro at least for me anyway here's something else that really sucks about the iphone 15 pro they changed the screen and they made it rounded and they did this for ergonomics apparently now i don't know anybody who spends thousands of dollars on cell phones and doesn't get a case like i there are a few like weirdos on Reddit that go caseless and then post a, a week later showing they dropped their phone and it's back into Apple Care. I have never in my life of owning a flagship cell phone not gone out and purchased a case ever. Multiple cases for different occasions, right? So this change making this, this glass curved, who's that for? Is it for the 95, 98% of all flagship phone buyers who then go on to purchase a case who would never notice this change? I don't know, but what it did create is it created this halo effect with screen protectors. I've gone through about $50 of screen protectors trying to get any of them to just not have this halo effect. But because there's a curvature there, every single one of them has this halo effect. Didn't happen on the iPhone 14, which is another reason why I loved iPhone so much. That flat surface, there was something about it. It just, I loved it. Why everybody switched to this curve, I'll never understand. iPhone absolutely nailed it with the 14 Pro, that flat screen where screen protector laid flat and everything worked exactly as it should. And it, it was a tank, it was heavy, it was stainless steel. It was, it felt like a pro phone. This thing, even though it's, it's built with titanium now, it, it doesn't inspire the same level of confidence as the 14 Pro did. And after further research, it seems that this back glass and this whole back is way more delicate than the 14 Pro ever was. And don't even get me started on the stability of the iPhone 15 Pro. I had my iPhone 14 Pro for a full year. I never had a single crash. I never had a single lockup. I never had to power cycle my phone because of random behavior. My iPhone 14 Pro out of the box worked and it converted me. It converted me from my, my Android lifestyle over to, to Apple and iPhone. It, it was the reason why. So when I went to do this upgrade to the, the 15 Pro, I was so disappointed. Everything about it. This phone has crashed four times. When I say crashed, I mean, I opened up my camera to take some pictures of my dog being really cute while he was asleep. When I opened my camera, the whole thing locked up. I had no idea how to get out of it. I couldn't figure it out. I had to go and watch a YouTube tutorial on how to hard restart my phone because I'd never had to do it before because I had the iPhone 14 Pro. Since then, it's crashed in the camera app two more times. And then once while I was using Chrome, just web browsing, the whole thing locked up, starts feeling warm, have to hard power it down. I've only had this phone for about 25, 30 days now. And it's crashed more than my iPhone 14 did 
in over a year of heavy usage. Battery life on this thing. It's got a slightly bigger battery, like tiny, tight, like 3% bigger battery than the iPhone 14 Pro had, but I can't get a full day out of this now. I could on my iPhone 14 Pro. I'm not sure if it's the new A17 chip or something to do with, you know, what's going on in the background of the phone or the CPU is using a little bit more power. So it's kind of sipping that battery a little bit faster. No idea, but just another thing that going from my 14 Pro to the 15 Pro, it just sucks. Like the only good thing that's come out of me buying the iPhone 15 Pro is the fact that I found these dope cases. When I say dope cases, this one's in like this bright fluorescent greeny yellow color. I always buy black cases. I don't know about you, but I put my phone down at night and then I've got a black phone with a black case and I can never find it. So I thought, ha, let's get like a fluorescent neon case for my old eyes. I'll be able to see it from a mile away, but you know what, it works. You can actually see this thing from a mile away. But this is actually a really solid case. It has this um, extra silicon protection for the cameras. I used to put those stupid uh, camera lens protectors on, which would, Obviously, it's going to scuff the quality of your pictures. It's cheap plastic over, you know, reasonable sapphire glass. So this thing has these built-in silicon covers. So when you put the phone in the case, it's all nice and flush. When you put this on a desk, there's that protection there, that silicon sitting just above the lenses. So you can put it down safely knowing that you're not going to, you know, smash your lenses every time you put your phone down. So absolutely love this case. This case is probably the best thing about my upgrade from the iPhone 14 Pro to the 15 Pro. I'll leave a link to this one in the description. It comes in all kinds of colors and this is the best case I think I've ever bought. It was like 12 bucks. I usually buy like, you know, 30, $40 Spigens or router boxes, but I went with a, just a cheap Amazon one this time and I'm blown away by the quality. It's like reinforced corners, this cool little uh, camera protector with the silicon over it. Love this little camera protector. My whole experience with the iPhone 15 uh, Pro has just been abysmal. I am completely unsatisfied for a flagship phone for $1,000 is not good enough. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap it up. I'm probably gonna send the 15 Pro back and then just buy another iPhone 14 Pro. To say my disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined is an understatement with this phone. This wasn't an upgrade. This, was, this wasn't even a side grade. This was just a straight from hero to zero moment for me. The iPhone 14 Pro, absolutely love it. Can't wait to get it back. iPhone 15 Pro, couldn't recommend it. Even to my worst enemy, it sucks. So there it is, my thoughts on upgrading from the iPhone 14 Pro to the iPhone 15 Pro. Was it an upgrade? Absolutely not. Was it a side grade? Not even. Absolutely massive downgrade across the board, in my opinion. I'm sorry if I ruffled any feathers with this one. I'm just trying to be honest and steer you away from buying the iPhone 15 Pro. It's just not a very good phone. Mine's going back. I'm gonna rebuy a 14 Pro and just live that super happy, I love my iPhone 14 Pro life. Thank you so much for watching everybody. I've been UK, you've been fantastic. I will see you in the next one.